and studying pollution, uh, quantifying it, looking at its distribution, and uh, hopefully eventually lead to, uh, that will lead to some work with communities on source reduction. Uh, right now I have two projects that are really in their beginning phases and one is looking at um, polyaromatic hydrocarbons which come from oils and uh, burning fossil fuels and uh, we find they're really long lasting, we find them a lot of places in the environment and uh, they're carcinogenic. And so anyway, we're, we're working on that. And we're also working on a project with capstone students on carbon contamination in harbors. That's my thing, looking at pollution in different areas, uh, trying to quantify it, and like I said, hopefully work back to uh, its source and, and try to work the source reduction. And then I'm also doing a little bit of work with um, wastewater treatment plants on um, how do you say it, um, bringing their, their technologies into the future. So just helping them with some measurements and helping them look at different possibilities on uh, treating wastewater. Yeah, that is my focus. And I teach um, ESRM 100. And um, last year I taught, we um, I piloted a class on uh, coastal contaminants and ecotoxicology, which I think is gonna run with spring. Yes. Oh, it is, awesome, okay. <laughs> Um, so there's that, and then I also teach um, environmental chemistry through the chemistry department. So if you have a chemistry interest, it's a really fun way to combine environmental science and chemistry. Uh, and yeah, so that's my real Zoos Connect. <laughs> 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 I do. I do too. It sounds funny. funny. I'm a professor and I hate the microphone. <laughs> Hi, people on the computer. Can you see me? Sorry, here. So oh, here. here. Oh, here. Hi, people on the computer. Um, everybody, I am Kiki Patch. I am starting my fourth year here in ESRM. I, like Linda, am also a geomorphologist. So I teach a lot of our physical science classes, oceanography. Uh, the beach, which is fun. I also teach a lot of our geospatial classes. So if you're interested in GIS, I see a lot of my GIS people here, which What's is great. GIS? What's GIS? Ooh, see, you should one. take the class. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Geographic information systems. So if you like geography, like Linda, or you like maps, or you just have an interest in the science of where, like that. Oh. See, I can't use that. I know, it's trademarked. I really want to name a class that because it sounds awesome, but we're working on it. So my research is really looking at sand. So if you're interested in sand or the beaches, you can come and talk to me about that. I do a lot of coastal geomorphology stuff. I work a lot with the drones. So if you're interested in learning how to fly the drones, you should talk to Dr. Anderson and then you can come get roped into all of my research as Nathan will tell you. I have a lot of beaches that need flown and a lot of work that needs to be done on looking at coastal change. So things like sea level rise, El Nino, we map them, we use drones, we look at how the beaches change. And I'm also starting to get interested in uh, sand mafias and illegal sand mining and things like that. See, you're interested wow. now, right? You should come and talk to me. And uh, yeah, we have lots of cool work for you guys to do. You get an unlisted phone number. Yeah, apparently it's dangerous, so I'll just send you guys out to do the field. <laughs> I'll just sign the waiver, right? Yeah. Okay, so Dan, I think that's it. If you guys have any questions, you can come see me in my office hours. I'm over in Bell Tower. This semester I'm teaching a lot of GIS, so mostly I'll be in Sierra, walking between um, the GIS lab and the cons bio lab, so you'll probably see me in Sierra. All right, Dan. No, I'm no. Oh, Claire. <laughs> awesome. I was going to say, but I'm here. Uh, you say, say who you are, okay. a little bit about your background, and what you research stuff. But so they need to be able to see you here, so stand right there. You Hi, you Zoom peeps. <laughs> Hello. My name is Claire Steele. Uh, I have a class going on right now, which is why I just kind of butted in. Uh, I teach the environmental film series, uh, which is an awesome one-unit class. If you need that one unit, um, it's available to you. I also teach conservation biology, which we are trying to add sections all the time because it's a really popular class. And I know you guys are um, interested in that class. It's very fun. I love wildlife and um, my background is a marine biologist. So um, I am interested in all things marine. I tend to do, uh, right now I'm working on a lot of microplastics work in sediment and in water and uh, in organisms that live in the ocean too. 
Uh, I have a class in January going to Maui to look at the impact of ecotourism on marine megafauna. So that'll be looking at What's marine megafauna, marine megafauna like humpback whales and manta rays and green tur sea, sea turtles. Um, so that's very exciting. More information to come soon on that. Um, my background, I'm originally from England. I lived and worked on a series of small islands in Egypt, Greece, Kenya, Fiji, Philippines, <laughs> Bahamas, and French Polynesia. And then I came to the US um, and did a lot of work doing uh, resource um, inventory and management applications in those places. Uh, and anything else? Uh, that's good. Oh, 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 what, what's your office hours? My office hours, uh, generally from uh, on Tuesday and Thursday from 12 to 1.30. And then any other time that we can make work by email appointment, I'd be very happy to accommodate. Cool. Thanks. What's happening? <laughs> uh, I am Dan Reineman. Uh, I'm a second year in ESRM. <laughs> Sophomore. Sophomore. So it's nice to be back and see lots of familiar faces. Uh, I think unlike the rest of the faculty on this interdisciplinary program, I, I, I came from an interdisciplinary program, and so perhaps I can relate to <laughs> the foibles i was going to say challenges <laughs> and opportunities right uh once upon a time i was a marine biologist proper so i did my undergraduate degree on basically in, in scuba gear counting fish and algae uh, and then i went i got a master's in oceanography counting coral and algae <laughs> <laughs> And uh, along the way, I, I realized that if we want to do something about protecting and conserving these species and these systems, that you can know as much as there is to know about coral and algae. And it won't necessarily help you protect them, or it won't necessarily help you save them. We need to know a little bit, something a little bit about us and human systems and human societies and what we do and why we do it and how we manage what we do and so like i, I literally like sorry no so i like i literally like, I put my, my wetsuit on a shelf and i went and i bought shoes and i bought like, a, a wool suit suit and i moved to washington dc and worked on capitol hill um in the u.s congress I did some lobbying, which is really interesting. Uh, and then I went back and I did an inter interdisciplinary PhD at Stanford University, trying to integrate everything that I learned in DC with what I'd learned in the natural sciences. So what I study now is the coast of California and all of its complexity, how we affect it and how it affects us. I'm really interested in coastal resources that don't get surprisingly little attention from other academics, like waves. Uh, waves are really important in California. Um, so that's that's what I do now. I teach, uh, if I'm on a law policy, I teach land use planning, and I guess what I'm trying to teach in sustainability. Uh, I'm really interested in the classes I teach and sort of filling in between all of the, the technical scientific skills that you get in this program and making sure that you have skills to engage as citizens uh, which will be important in your jobs whether it's the writing and communicating that you do that's non-technical or the fact that maybe someday you'll live somewhere and you'll care which is by the way we're all going to live somewhere <laughs> when we yeah. leave here and you're going to want to you're going to care about what happens in this place where you live what happens to the trees and the roads and the schools. And so I'll, I want you to leave my classes with some skills for participating in the processes that govern what happens to those things that we care about. So that's me, John Emily. Emily Walsh. Emily Walsh. Emily Walsh. Oh, do I have to hold it? No. Hi, I'm Emily. I am the ESRM lab technician so i run the labs in sierra hall and modoc and the greenhouse and all of our storage spaces i'm kind of the person 
around campus a lot. Um, I was an alum, I, I am an alumni, so I was in your shoes. I graduated in 20, 2014. <laughs> 2014. <laughs> 2014, um, I went through the whole program. I started as a freshman and graduated in four years. So if you guys have any questions, I've been through it all. I only had Sean and Don, so I didn't, and Linda. I didn't have Kiki, Dan, Claire, any of them when I was here. Poor um, thing. I know. I know. And I didn't, I also didn't have Sierra Hall. So the school has grown <laughs> quite a bit. Um, I studied abroad to Australia. So if you guys have questions on how that works, I can probably help. And um, I do all of our volunteer coordinations. If you want to get started in the labs, I have open volunteer hours from three to five on Thursdays. I like everyone to come. Um, we'll be breaking down oceanography lab most of the time. We'll be helping, we'll, we have various projects that I can, I always need help with. So that's a great place to start. First thing you have to do is get safety trained though. And that's 8.30 on Thursday morning. Just super quick, like 15 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. You'll make it to your 9, 9 a.m. class. Awesome. Yeah. And Lisa, yeah, 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 yeah. And Lisa's one of our recent graduates. Kind of, almost graduated, <laughs> almost graduated. So there's a, in our program, there's a lot of people that like to stick around in a good sense, right? So there's always, if you guys have questions about stuff that maybe is more qualitative, maybe not for good for the faculty, there's all these great resources around that you get, hey, you know, how do you deal with Sean when he's cranky or stuff like that? <laughs> these guys, it's a, it's a great resource to, to ask these guys, hey, you know, what did you do? How did you navigate this issue? And um, you know you shouldn't be embarrassed to to ask these guys. Uh, they're they're really helpful and really um, useful folks. Um, cool. All right. So I'm going to run through some of the stuff that's that's coming up, and then a little bit about our program, and then we're going to open it up for questions that you guys have. Sound good? All right. Cool. So um, a couple things are uh, just to start off with. Um, just so you, you you guys don't necessarily need to know about this, but just so that you're aware. Some of you that have been here before this year, we um, have had a great uh, program analyst, uh, the person that helps us with scheduling and logistics and get this thing signed and th this and that. Mia, whose office is when you walk in uh, to the Bell Tower West from the area where the um, gym is. So she just, um, she's all good. She's starting law school and she's starting a, a different position on campus. It's higher pay, so it's good for her. But she, she just left. And so we're in the process of, of getting a replacement um, staff member for that, that office. So for the next week or two, it's going to be particularly hard a little bit to get some things done. Not, not for you guys, but, but if stuff takes a little bit longer or your faculty are a little bit more distracted, um, that should hopefully pass as soon as we get this replacement stuff. But we're just having to do a lot more um, silly, silly things than we typically are supposed to do. So just so you guys understand that. Um, all kinds of cool things are happening. I'm just gonna run through a list of neat things. Um, last year, again, if you guys are new, this won't make a whole lot of sense to you, but those of you that have been with us for a while, um, we heavily use uh, Santa Rosa Island. So if you guys haven't been out there yet, you'll go out with some of your classes. We have research out there, all kinds of stuff. And, and our um, former uh, director and good friend of ours passed away at the start of last year. And so last year was really chaotic for us. It was very difficult to do scheduling and things like that. And it was just, it was very hard. So um, happily, we have a new director now, Russ. He just started last week. So we also, you know, is kind of just getting up to speed, but um, he's going to be great. And, um, and we are getting back to our full strength out on Santa Rosa Island. So if you guys haven't been, it's a great time to go out this semester, either with your class or with one of the faculty or, or any of the other opportunities. It really is a, a, a killer place. And, um, and it's fundamental to our program and a lot of other programs, but that, that there, I know there was a lot of like, what's going on with Santa Rosa? It's, it's fixed, it's back, it's, it's happening. Um, have a lot of new research projects, some of these that, that Dan and Kiki and, and Mary talked about. Um, you guys should start volunteering, even if you're not in Capstone, even if you're not in one of these research things. And minor, freshman, transfer, it doesn't matter. You guys should um, figure out what might be interesting and go and talk to these folks, look up their office hours, or go come talk to me, send them an email. Um, sometimes we're a little bit busy, so if you don't get a response, you know, send another email and, and just keep bugging and come by. Um, many of us have uh, regular office hours. You guys are welcome to, or um, excuse me, uh, lab meetings. You guys are welcome to come and crash, and if you ask them, they'll tell you those, uh, those dates. One that is um, sort of a, a bit uh, beyond one professor, but it's sort of our, our big group that does anything with robotics. It's called our, our, our 
Aerial and Aquatic Robotic Research Group, AARR, or R, pirate thing. Um, that meets every Friday, noon to 12.15, in the, in the tech lab on the second floor of um, second floor of Sierra Hall. You guys can just drop in, come in, and see what's interesting. I encourage you guys, if you think maybe one of these research projects that Dr. Wu or, or anybody is working on, go, go talk to her or him and say, hey, can I start helping out? You volunteer to start to get experience. You also volunteer to figure out if you actually like this, right? Before you go spend year, before you graduate and then get a job somewhere and then realize, oh my God, wetlands suck. I don't want to work in wetlands, right? Find out now, right? So, so you're both not only getting experience, you're also learning. So you're trying on a pair of shoes, you're trying on a pair of research shoes, a career shoe. And it's totally cool. Don't try it for a day and leave because then it's like, a flight. But you know, you could try it for a week or a few weeks and you know, you can talk to the professor, you know, this isn't really my thing. I think I want to work on something else. Totally cool. Please do that. Get involved. Go talk to these folks and and figure out how you can start volunteering and then uh, eventually do more and more. And again, that's open to everybody regardless of major or what have you. Um, we have a bunch of new cool tools in the labs. In our, in our labs, we have this new thing called a Glowforge, which is really cool. It's like a laser cutter thing that does laser cutting things. So um, it just arrived a, a week or so ago and got turned out about a week or so ago. So um, we're still figuring it out. But once it gets up and running, um, we're going to offer you guys an, op an option. If you guys want to do things like customize your laptop, um, it'll, it'll burn your laptop metal. It'll burn your plastic, whatever. And whatever. It, yeah, it's in our phone. So we're probably going to do something like a 5 or $10 thing. We'll burn whatever. And that 5 or $10 thing will become a pot of money for you guys to do projects and stuff. <laughs> that's the first project you guys have to figure out how we add, we have to be glow forge we're gonna glow forge thing uh, we got we got we're new drones we have a bunch of new ROVs so some of you uh, we've had a lot of underwater robots ROVs remotely operated vehicles a lot of flying things um, some of them have gotten a bit old and beaten up. We just are getting those refreshed. So we have two brand new ROVs, including one that'll go down, um, is it 300 meters? Yeah. Yeah, 300 meters. Um, and so a bunch of cool new toys. At the, by the end of the year, we should have our boat. So we're having a new, our first boat that we can do all kinds of crazy cool stuff. So it really is an exciting time to, to do all this kind of stuff. Another thing that we're doing is we're starting to offer, um, through our consortium, where we have a consortium with our, our fellow CSUs in the greater Los Angeles area. Um, if you guys are interested in starting to do underwater research or anything like that, um, we're now going to offering three research dive classes. And research dive classes are the things you, you have to have a research dive certification to do, to do work for a, a park service or aquaria or, or researchers like us. And um, it's not that big a deal. It takes a little bit of time, but it's hard to get into those research classes, um, research certification classes, we have three of those a year. So that's another thing you guys, you guys can talk to uh, Dr. Reinemann or myself or Dr. Steele if, if that's of interest. Another great opportunity for you guys to do that. Um, we are uh, in the midst of, of just starting a bit of an overhaul of our major. So for all you guys that are here, for all you guys that are already declared or will declare this semester or something, a minor or whatever, it's all good. It's gonna, nothing's gonna change. But starting next year, we're going to have some slightly different options, some modified, um, modified emphases, some, um, assuming this is all approved, uh, some um, uh, certificates, so GIS, sustainability, things like that, that um, you guys can put on your resume and all that kind of good stuff. So stay tuned for that. Um, uh, but again, a, a real common one we get with, so some of you guys came, declared your major or minor three years ago, and some did it last uh, spring and some did it this year, right? So there's, there's different times. Um, you guys are allowed to stay on whatever those old requirements are until you graduate. But you always have the option to switch to the, the current, the newest one, right? But once you do that switch, you can't go back. So generally speaking, most of you guys probably wanna stay on the, the requirements you have, but we do get that, I get that question a lot. Um, and so, yes, we're, we're over, overhauling the major a bit. Um, our master's program hopefully will finally be approved. We've been working on this for several years, um, so that in uh, in a year, year and a half or so, we should have our master's program up and running. Um, you guys can ask us about that. For the first time ever, we have three ESRM trips. Dr. Steele referenced the Maui one. So normally we have one trip, 
the last couple of years we've had two for whatever reasons we we prayed the right way or something um we got three and so um there'll be an information session in middle october if you guys are interested in going on one of those trips i would highly encourage you guys to all consider doing that the short version is their ira trips school pays for two-thirds of the trip cost you guys only have to pay one-third the trip cost so for uh, uh, Hawaii and New Orleans, it's on the order of six, seven, seven hundred fifty, somewhere that dollars. Um, or sorry, no, I think that's. Wait, is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. And then I think Costa Rica is like a thousand, eleven hundred, something in that order of magnitude. So it's it is money. We understand that, but that's for you know two weeks or ten days, including airfare, food, room, board. So it really is amazingly cheap. And I would like you guys to really, really seriously think about that. We'll have an information session towards middle October, we'll announce that. You guys do not have to go to the information session. You can just come, and these classes are open to everybody across campus, so your roommate or friend or whatever, he or she can, can totally apply as well. Um, uh, there'll be applications you guys fill out, and then we let you know in early November if you know who's in what. Um, normally, we have more people apply than we have spots slots for, but this year, because we have three trips, I, I, I suspect there's a good chance if you guys want to go on one of these trips you'll get on at least one of them and so that's really that's really great that's really cool so do consider that the Maui trip is going to go over Christmas break between um, New Year's and when school starts uh, the Costa Rica and New Orleans trips go um, over spring break so um, so you guys can can talk to me or any anybody else about those um, uh, we're having an the first ever electro fishing certification class in California, which is a thing that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service does, um, and that's where you tick. It's science. It is science. <laughs> you stick the paddles in the water, and it shocks the fish, and the fish are like, Ugh! and then they float up. And so um, it's a great way to catch fish. It sounds super for nasty science. for science. It sounds super nasty, but it actually, it, you don't. Yeah, you don't need sign. You don't have to hook them in the cheek or whatever. Um, and so if you do it right, it, their fish is totally fine. If you do it wrong, it kind of hurts. And when we used to do it at Stanford, sometimes people would fall over and, and shock themselves. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And so um, because we do have things like uh, endangered steelhead and stuff in our streams, you can't just willingly grab something, right? We want to make sure we're not harming. Well, we don't want to hurt things in general, but especially things if their populations are very low. And so this is a... a a class that's going on. It's it's an all week long thing. So people are coming from across the U.S. to take it. But um, if you guys are interested, uh, you should talk to me. We might be able to figure out some way of helping augment your your um, uh, uh, tuition and stuff. But it's a really unique experiment. Experience. We'll be in the the tech lab and then out in our local streams. So that's a cool opportunity for you guys. Um, Emily already mentioned her volunteer hours. Um, mentioned the new boat, uh, the research dive classes that are coming up, and all that good stuff. Um, uh, so then real quick, before we open up for questions, I just want to mention a couple of the issues that people have been asking about. Well, actually, let me step back. Firstly, there's a lot of rumors that have been floating around about what class are being offered. That's BS. Don't believe the rumors. You guys should come talk to one of our faculty, talk to me. Hey, I'm wondering what's going to be offered, you know, in the fall, what's offered in the spring, et cetera. Some of the rumors got going because we had some money issues um, school did, not, not, not we per se, but we had some money issues last year, so we couldn't offer the normal palette of classes. So we did not offer water resources. We did not offer um, uh, field methods last spring like we normally do. And so several students have started saying, that's so we're no longer teaching those classes. We need to substitute this and that. No, no, right? So we will be offering our regular courses and additional ones like Mary just left, but our, our coastal contaminants class. So um, if you guys have any questions, come ask me. Don't listen to your bud. I mean, I mean, they might give you some advice, but don't believe what they say until you check with me. Um, uh, yeah, um, another new one that, that's coming up you guys should all think about. Right now it's an optional thing, but in the next year or two, it's, it, we're probably gonna move to make it a requirement, which is field professionalism. It's one unit, pass, no pass. Um, and it's designed to do a bunch of things. When we had our boat, you can get certified on how to drive the boat and that kind of stuff with this, with this one unit pass, no pass class. But right now, um, what the main thing we're using it for uh, both this semester and next semester is wilderness first aid certification. So this is a national certification. It's good for two years. You can put it on your resume. It's really, really good. And um, 
even if you don't want to be Mr. or Mrs. Wilderness First Aid person, it's a great thing so that you guys are a bit safer. And what we're, what we're really trying to encourage is any of you guys going on one of these trips um, to, to uh, you know, New Orleans or Maui or whatever, if you're going to go out and spend some significant time, not just a day trip, but significant time out on Santa Rosa for a capstone, whatever, we want you guys to have Wilderness First Aid certification. Normally, if you were to take this course in, in you know, one of the regular places, you're going to pay like $250, $350. For us, it costs $70. And our instructor basically does it for free. That $70 is just paying the national certification fee and you get a couple books. So it's a really, really sweet deal. This year, or excuse me, this semester, we're doing it on the third weekend. So it's one all day Saturday, one all day Sunday, and that's it. We meet just that one weekend of the semester. And uh, so if you guys want to add that, you can come see me. I can give you an ad code. Um, but I really want to encourage you guys to think about that. We'll also be offering that in the spring. Um, but that's, that's a, a, we, we ran it as a, as a trial last year, just as a volunteer thing, not as a class. And now we're, we're offering it as for, for one unit of credit. Um, yeah, so, so the classes that we know are problematic. There's, there's always some problematic classes. But the ones that are particularly challenging right now are, are Dan's land use and um, conservation biology. So I know there's a lot of students that are trying to get into that and for various reasons um, we've had issues. We understand that, we're trying, we're, we're, we're working on it. Um, we can't get everybody into those respective classes this semester, but we're working on some workarounds and um, by next semester we're hoping to have taken care of the problem. A part of it is that we have um, great students from other majors that want to take our classes and if they're a senior and you're a junior they kind of enroll and they take something as elective, but something that you guys have a requirement, it, you can't get in. And so we're, we're aware of that and we're, and we're working on that. So we can answer questions about that, but, but that is an, that we are aware that that's going on. Um, another one is, uh, um, prereqs. So we started, the university started enforcing prereqs for classes a year ago or whenever or something like that, about like that. And, um, don't be, turned off to a class because you don't have the prereqs met. If you want to take a class, and the reason you're not taking it because, oh, I haven't taken this class, or I'm, I'm enrolled, you know, co-enrolled in this class, but I haven't finished it yet, go talk to your instructor. Ask him or her, is it okay if I haven't finished this? The majority of times, it's probably not that big a deal. And so, um, so don't, and so, so automatically, it might not allow you to get enrolled, but you could talk to your instructor, and if it's not a problem, he or she will give you an ad code that will get you around the, the blockage of saying you haven't you haven't completed this particular uh, prereq or, or something. Um, some are important, but not all are important. So just because you see that, don't not try to get in a, into a class. Um, one of the things we're going to start to try to move to next year with our with this new major, uh, the revision of the major is a cohort based model. So you guys are taking the class that are a bit more programmed, so we can guarantee that you guys will get in and, and get on, you know, in, in progress to your four year graduation date. So we are working on that, but that's going to be still a little bit of work in progress. And, um, and then just one last thing before I open up for questions in terms of, uh, for you guys that are all new, in general, if you guys are just starting or thinking about transferring to ESRM, ESRM 100 is your first gatekeeper class. So you really need to take that before you get into other stuff. So that's the first thing. The next thing is really the main entrance. So really the major is designed for uh, doing a lot of interdisciplinary stuff, your econ, your, your chemistry, your that kind of stuff in the, the first couple of years. And the, our hope is at the start of your junior year this semester, or if not this semester, next semester, if this is your junior year, you guys would take at least two of these, these fundamental courses for us for upper division, and that's uh, 328, Introduction to GIS, and Conservation Bio, uh, which is ESRM slash, con, uh, slash biology, excuse me, 313. So, tr so we really want to get you guys into there and, um, and, and do try to make those a priority because those are really considered foundational so that we can do GIS exercises and other classes that you guys can understand and, and utilize that cool tool. And cons bio is where we really introduce a lot of our intensive writing and stuff like that for the, for the major. Another one that might be of interest to you guys is our editing studio. So that's an, that's an English class. Um, there's 299 and there's 399. For most of you guys, 399 is the right one. Um, but that's a one unit, again, pass, no pass class that we've put together. We started doing it last year. All the students that participated um, really, really got a lot out of it. So this is, you know, pass, no pass, you show up, you bring your work from our classes, from Dr. Patch's class, from whoever's class, and you work on writing. So you can't do tests, you can't do take-home tests and stuff in the, 
to do. But um, it could be your capstone stuff. It could be your paper for cons bio. You bring it in and you and your peers work through it and they've brought in their writing from their other classes. And so um, it really seems to benefit you guys a lot and all the response was great. So um, uh, that's, that's $3.99. Um, English 399 so so consider that you can come talk to me after if you need info for that um, and yeah before I open up for questions are there other other things my faculty want to mention or that we want to mention as a group no this year is going to be so awesome it's going to be incredibly awesome I'll tell you one example of how awesome it's going to be let me know what happened on January 28th 1969 That's right, Santa Bar 1969 Santa Barbara oil spill. Fundamental event in the history of, of environmental science, environmental justice, all these things, environmental policy, laws, all, uh, civic activism, all kinds of stuff. It, it wasn't the only thing, but it was, it was really a watershed moment. And this January is the 50th anniversary of that event. And so we're working on, um, with, with colleagues here and faculty and students and, and people from around the state, doing um, some symposia and some meetings and some, some art and things like that to commemorate this really, really important thing and to talk about it. So what did this thing do? What did this event do? Did it affect all people? Did it only mess up the rich people? You know, wh what's going on? Did it affect offshore communities? You know, all that kind of cool stuff. And so more on that in, in a month or two when we get things a little bit more organized, but there's gonna be lots of opportunities for you guys to be involved. Could be a research thing, could be facilitating. And it's going to be really, really cool as but one small example to support Dr. Reinemann's uh, case that this is going to be an awesome year. That's good. All right, good. So other than that, that's all the formal stuff we have. If you guys have questions, you guys can come up and ask us. Or if you don't want to ask in front of everybody, I'd love for you guys to ask in front of everybody because I'm sure four other people have the same question. But um, if you guys don't want to do that, uh, we can also just, uh, you guys can come up and, and ask Q&A for us, uh, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Sound good? All right, you guys have a great year. Yeah. All right, let me let me. So, do you guys have any any questions? Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier about you said they're switching the curriculum for the majors and minors. Um, how much different is it going to be? I'm a, I'm a minor right now, so how much different is that curriculum going to be? It, it it won't be for you. You you can stay on on your your regular one. Okay. Um, we're going to do some things like move uh, GIS into like a lower division class, or there's okay. some things. I mean, it's not 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 we're not starting all over. It's it's tweaks, a little bit tweaks here and there. Mm -hmm. So it's to make it easier for you guys to get through in four years. But all the classes that we're teaching now, you guys will still have access to. You can still take them. Okay. So um so uh. One, so right now we have environmental science resource management, an emphasis in environmental science, and emphasis in resource management. And so we're going to change those emphases, for example, to be more parallel to with um, the. Uh, and this isn't completely done yet, so I don't want to I don't want to commit exactly what we're doing, but where our, our current thoughts are, as I should say, um, to be more in parallel with our master's program. And so one of the emphases will be in coastal management, one will be in conservation technologies. And then the third will be a bit more of a vanilla, like a regular one that isn't, isn't about technology, isn't about the coastal management. It's more just sort of a generic. Really oh, it's super good. I love vanilla. I don't, I don't not like vanilla. And n never get the strawberry or the chocolate shake at in and out is my, is my, is my <laughs> suggestion. So um, anyway, yeah, so, so, it, it, so it's stuff that I think we'll, we'll, we'll add some cool stuff, but it's not going to take away any of the opportunities or any of the courses you guys are talking about. Um, the one thing we will add that we don't have now is this option to get um, a certificate. So what does that mean? Who the hell knows? But it means you take a couple classes, three classes maybe, depends on which we're talking about, but you know, three classes-ish or so, and you can get a, a certificate in geospatial science or whatever we call it and that kind of stuff. Um, that doesn't, it's not a legal thing. It's not, you don't get money for it or something, but it's a cool thing on your resume that you can put on the, hey, so people understand, oh, she's, she has some experience in this. She has some experience with drones. She has some experience with whatever. Um, so those those were more on that once we we haven't completely solidified and that's why I'm a little bit hedging my bet but it's mostly about making things work more smoothly for you guys in terms of scheduling and, okay, stuff. and that's starting next semester? No, no, no. Next okay. year. Okay. Next year. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Um so about these chips like the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what kind of preparation yeah, great question. A great question. So the question is, so these trips sound cool, but what are they? So they're all with classes. They're all associated with classes. 
So Dr. Rodriguez's is a university class. Uh, Dr. Steele's is a university class. So UNIV is the is the uh, uh, preposition or whatever we call it, the, the program. Um, New Orleans is ESRM, but it doesn't matter. They're all you can use them all for upper division uh, ESRM elective credits. Um, and and did I drop them? Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Um, so. Uh, so I'll tell you about, um, so Dr. Steele, is the, we've taught the Hawaii class several times, but the Hawaii class has mostly been about doing research on humpback whales, behavioral ecology. Most of that was to, um, to uh, uh, go out on boats and, and watch mom and calf do some stuff. In the last couple of years, we've added drones, so now we do most of the behavioral work from the air, so we, we're much less disturbing of the moms and babies, and we get way better data. Um, but that was top in the biology department. Um, and we in ESRM are much more interested in interdisciplinary. The culture of, of the communities we're talking about, we want to go meet people, we want to you know, embed ourselves in communities and, and, and make a difference. Um, the bio folks taught that pretty much as a straight ahead research project. And so Dr. Steele is helping to evolve that. Dr. Cartwright, who's our whale queen, is still, is still involved and she has her nonprofit and everything. Um, and so we're working with her, but Dr. Steele is taking the helm. So I'm not entirely, she hasn't, unless somebody knows more than me, she hasn't entirely decided how that one's going to roll. It's probably going to have um, a, a class. So they're going to do the trip first, and then there'll probably be a component when you guys get back that you'll do stuff. In the case, the more typical case, which is Costa Rica and New Orleans, we meet um, once a week, not every single week, but, but many weeks. Um, in the evening time, usually when you guys don't have any other classes, and in my case, we talk about the history of Louisiana. We talk about um, uh, uh, music. We talk about culture. We talk about politics, all that kind of stuff. And then we actually, so we're getting preparation for the trip, readings, videos, that kind of stuff. Then we actually physically go for spring break. We leave a little team bit early. We're not supposed to, but, you know, screw yeah. it. We'll leave a little early. Um, and then we sometimes stay a little late. Sometimes it depends on the weather. And, stuff. and so um, and so we go and do that and uh, come back. And then we have a requirement. So even if you guys can't go this year because of schedule or money or whatever, you guys all must come to our April um, uh, poster slash video slash gumbo session. And so IRA is supposed to benefit all you guys. When we bring a speaker here, no problem. You guys can go hear the speaker. When I take you guys to New Orleans or to Maui or to whatever, obviously only the, the group of students that is you know, in our class can go. But we have always held for the last 13 years, we've held a, a basically a party when we get back to share with you guys some of the cool stuff. So students make posters, students do videos, students, some write songs, some do games. Um, and so that is sort of a, that is a celebration. So our students will make food. They learn how to, how to cook in New Orleans or in, or in Costa Rica or what have you. And so um, that's the end of the class. So you come back and the, tr the trip doesn't end after spring break. We do a little bit of beta cleanup and stuff and we deliver products to our partners, our NGO partners and stuff and in the form of data and write-ups. And then you guys produce something and then the class ends. So the first half of the semester, you're going to evening classes, you go on the trip, and then you have a few classes after spring break, and that's basically it. And so three unit class. Other question? Yeah. You mentioned the wilderness training class. Uh, wilderness first aid. I don't know if you set a date and I didn't catch it. So yeah, so that's that's um, that's field professionalism. So the class is the, the title is generic, so we can you can take it up to three times. So you could we get we have we're going to be offering different different types of things. The current one. You just sign up for it. It's ESRM 301. If, uh, if you guys need an ad code, you can see me. You can see me now if you want. And that is meeting this semester. That's meeting the third weekend. So that's se September 15th, Saturday, and September 16th, Sunday. You have to be enrolled in the class to take it. You have to be enrolled in the class to take it. Yes, correct. The, the diving, that's all about also uh, The diving is a separate thing. If you guys, you guys talk to me. So the diving is taught over... over um, you have to have your open water one certification first, which you get would get at a local dive shop kind of thing. Then you have to do 12 dives on your own just for fun with, with friends and whatever. And then um, the course is offered, we offer one over winter break, one at the start of summer, one at the end of summer. And the courses are, are mostly, the majority of them are taught at, and the majority of the days at uh, Catalina. So it's offshore. So it's our, our big dive facility out there. Um, Will a lot of these dates and events be on the ESRM.zone or through email? Mm -hmm. 
ESRM.zone. ESRM.zone. Thank you. So I should have mentioned that. So if you guys are new, go to ESRM.zone. The, the, the ESRM.CSUCI.edu sucks. It's like the one we have to have, and it's super ugly. And it's, and it's more importantly, it's hard for us to control. Um, and so the ESRM zone, we completely control. So uh, these two right now are the, are the queens of, of making it run. And so it's just much easier for us to throw up how-to videos. Uh, you guys should all check the, check the, the news, the, the blog posts, you know, once a week or so. So that's when we, uh, when we put a posting up about this meeting, for example. And so we're going to be starting to do, use that much more aggressively. So check there. So first I would go check ESRM zone, look around, see if you can see anything. We have a calendar function. Yeah, ESRM events. So ESRM.zone slash events, you'll find all of our calendar postings there, including service learning opportunities. This is on there, Coastal Cleanup, um, everything that ESRM is so associated with. I try to keep it up. She helps me. And then also Melvin does the Instagram, which I'm really trying to have be more prevalent for you guys because I know that's something our you generation you checks kids. all the time. And so he's He's my Instagram guru, and he will be posting. So if we get new opportunities, he'll be posting about it. And um, there's also jobs and internships there. So oh, yeah. when people reach out to faculty, we send everything to Emily, who puts it on the jobs and internship area. And Lisa. And Lisa. <laughs> and Lisa. There's a password. So anybody in ESRM can get the password. That's to show other people, other state people, in terms of jobs. <laughs> So the history was we used to get these announcements. We used to put them up on the website, and then everybody started stealing them. UC Santa Barbara, and and so, and then we thought, oh, we'll kind of keep it in house, and then everybody started stealing them. Biology department, and so, so um, love it that we're helping those guys. We really, I mean, it's great. Right? We want to get people employed and all that good stuff, and, and bio and everybody. But we want you guys to have the first bite of the apple, and so um, we've tried various things over the years. The current solution is we have an area um, on the ESRM zone that all of you guys can get access to. And even after you graduate, you can keep access to that. So you can, you can still check back if you're looking for, you know, oh, I need to get a job or something after you graduate. But you need to get registered with these guys and request a password and then you're, and then you're good to go. So, so definitely check out ESRM Zone and definitely get on the jobs, uh, the job access. Uh, if you look at our Instagram, ci.esrm, there is a link directly to the, or this shows some examples of the job postings that are like that or on that page. It's called ops.opps.esrm.zone and it's password protected. Email me and I'll send you the password. And, and if there's an email on the website, my email's on the website. Emily.welsh at CCPS. Uh, and so, uh, you know, so all these things are trying to respond and help you guys more, right? And so if there's something over the course of the year, the semester or something, we're like, oh, we need blah 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 but we're all old or i'm all old and so i'm like what are you kids so tell us right and we can figure out and try to build that into uh, other way to communicate with you guys or other ways to to reach out to you guys um so definitely if you're having problems getting on something let us know um and we'll we'll fix it can you talk about the statistics courses for the major yes yeah, statistics is a sore subject for me because um, we've tried to overhaul it and and our, our first attempt didn't work. But the way it stands right now, we're, we're still working on it. The way it stands right now is you have three options um, uh, for statistics. If you guys haven't taken a statistics at your, your previous community college or whatever, there is um, uh, biostats, which is taught by our colleagues in the biology department. There is business uh, business statistics. I don't, is that what it's called? I don't remember the formal title, but statistics for business. Thank you. And so that's in the, in the business school. And then uh, there is just the generic one that's offered to the math department. Um, so uh, we're over the next year or two. I don't. I, it's a little bit early. I don't know if we have so many things on the on the burner right now. Um, many of the tools that you guys are learning maybe aren't the most um, easily adaptable for the kind of projects that we're doing. So there's. <laughs> sorry, I'm <been> digging. <laughs> Um, so uh, things like open source stuff, so R for a lot of our work, which is a, 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 a way to both present data and analyze data, it is free. There's a gazillion million mo modules out there. There's more all the time. There's also a coding you can do in um, our GIS environment. There's also uh, things you can do in math, math lab, all these different things um, that currently our colleagues that are teaching um, most of the statistics classes are not using R. I think Rachel was starting to use R, but I don't think 
Is, is anybody taking biostats lately? I'm taking it right now. But are you guys using R? No. Yeah. Like that, we're just going to do because of like the cell or something. Like that. I don't know. Yeah, Never that kind of hurts my soul. Um, so, <laughs> so you know, Excel's great for what Excel was designed to do to, to balance balance sheets and you know add and subtract and this kind of stuff. Um, I don't want to talk smack about someone, but but you want to you want to know survival statistics. You want to, if if you only had Excel and oh my God, the tidal wave is about to destroy the planet. Let's do it in Excel. <laughs> but that's not what you're going to use if you go to a professional organization. For, for unless you're doing the most simplest thing of just doing some averages of something. And so we want to make sure you guys are having access, just like we want you to have the newest drones and the newest GIS and this and that, and, and Dan's newest way to look at, um, uh, uh, you know, interviewing people and all those kind of things. We want to make sure you guys have the most up-to-date tools, the most effective tools that, that can answer our challenges. Excel is not the way to do statistics. And so we're trying to use some other tools, but because we don't control the statistics class, we can't tell them what to do. Yeah, he said that they tried, they were going to try doing the other systems. Like he said that they, like a lot of people were having more trouble than they were with Excel. Agreed. Yeah, so, so, so it, 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 it's, a, it's a different learning curve. You're, yeah, it, it is a challenge. So we're figuring out how to do it in a better way. Um, but for right now, those are, those are the options. My recommendation right now of those three would be to take biostats. So the, the business one is pretty not, not that rigorous. Cool. Other questions? No more questions. Okay, so we're going to hang out here for a couple more minutes if you guys want to come up and ask us things. But let me just end by saying, um, if you guys have been following the news of late, there's silly things that seem to be happening, right? Don't get despondent. The stuff that you're learning here from all these folks in front of us really are going to give you guys the skills to make this place a great planet again. So let's go make this, uh, this planet great again. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks, John. Woo, woo! So, you too. I'll see you.